my story began with a dream. I dreamt of building a boy who would grow in my family and um, able to keep records of every single tiniest detail of conversation that we ever have in our family. And from time to time, we can also teach him new stuff. We can give input, modify his database so that his database or knowledge base grow. So I built it. I named him Lokman Hakim. It was an acronym for Learnable Conversational Agent based on heuristic knowledge management. So one day, this was 15 years ago. At that time, the keywords, I didn't, know, I didn't really know what the terms really meant, but it sure sounded scientific to me at that time. So one day, I sat down and chat with the board, and I told him that dad, which is my husband, had a very ugly haircut. And I went on ranting how ugly he looked. A few days later, my husband um, sat with him, and to his surprise, his first response was, did you have a bad hair day? So of course my husband freaked out. How the heck did he know that I had a bad haircut? So then I explained. Of course he didn't know. He was just associating the word, the phrase, a bad hair day with a bad haircut. It was purely a random response. And technically, the keyword hair exists in his um, daily conversational log because we talk about it. And there was a pre-coded response which I put inside his database, a bad hair day. Nothing fancy. And not only there is nothing fancy to the technology, it is not also something new. The first chatbot was built in 1966 at the MIT lab by um, Joseph Weizenbaum. Um, it is called ELIZA. Now, ELIZA was built to model, to play the role of a Rogerian therapist. Why a Rogerian therapist? Because the dialogue strategy is the easiest to manage. A Rogerian reasoning by Carl Rogers is a conflict-solving technique that seeks for common ground, which means it is safe to design a bot that keeps on asking questions rather than offering solutions. Now, a classical example of interaction with Eliza goes something like this. Men are all alike. In what way? They're always bugging us for one thing or another. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? The response sounds legit. The machine sounded real. So what is a conversational agent? Basically, it is a computer program that is able to converse with human in natural language. It is also known by many other names, such as dialogue system, dialogue agent, chatbots, chatterbots. What are bots? Bots are computer programs that are designed to perform repetitive and automated tasks. They take away our mundane tasks of um, such as reminding us for our dental appointment, when to take our car to services. They also take annoying tasks such as booking a movie ticket or checking our account balances. Now, do you remember the Dell Touch option? Do you? Press one for English, press two for Bahasa Malaysia. Why ye and something that I don't get. Drives me nuts every time. I cut, cut um, to zero. There was no response for zero. And I was calling from prepaid at that time. So how do these bots work? Now, let's assume that I'm a bot. I receive input from my dialogue partner, which is you. And when I receive an input, it can be text-based, in the case you are texting to me. And believe me, texting is a major medium communication nowadays. Or it can be speech-based, in the case you are talking to me. Now, regardless the input, I would, uh, the regardless the medium of the input, I would take the input and I would perform natural language understanding tasks, such as um, tokenizing the input, 
um, I would split into sentences, into words. Then I would remove high frequency words such as the articles. I won't be needing those. Then I perform part of speech tagging where I extract the words and segregate. I identify which are nouns, which are verbs, and um, if they are nouns, what are the names of places, name of person, name of buildings. Then I would search in my database what would be the best response to give, to send back to you. Now, but in a spoken conversational agent, we have an additional two components because at the heart of any conversational agent is just the text-based engine. So in a spoken dialogue system, we need two more components. Number one, um, speech recognition. Speech recognition. Number two, speech synthesis. Now, the purpose of speech recognition is to convert raw acoustic signals into a list of possible um, hypotheses about what you say. A speech synthesis or text-to-speech basically um, converts the text back into voice. Now, the key to success for a conversational agent is actually does not rely on how intelligent your engine is or how big your database is or how grammatically correct your answer is or how fancy the words that you use, but quite simply, believability. We want to believe that we are actually conversing with an another human. Now, despite the fact that we want to um, create the atmosphere of believability, handling conversation is tricky because it is unique, it is um, different from any other text-based uh, medium used in text processing because it devoids detailed linguistic realization due to three reasons. Number one, um, dialogue utterance are often short, it can be incomplete, and it can even be grammatically incorrect. So let's assume, if I say, could you please hand me the pen? I wouldn't want you to answer by yes or no, even though that is a grammatically correct response. But what I want you to do instead, to actually pass me the pen. Or if I say, it's hot in here, I wouldn't want you to respond by simply agreeing with me by saying yes, but to act on it, to do something, like opening the window or turning on the fan. So, how do us humans deal with it? It is called intention. Our brain translates the input that we receive into um, three categories based on our intention, whether it is a statement, whether it is a question, or whether it is a request for action. That means a response, a bot response, should fare well as long as it satisfies the intention of the input it is responding to. Okay? Um, the Gartner hype cycle of emerging technologies has identified AI conversational platform to be in the stage of innovation trigger, which will reach plateau within five to 10 years. This means the AI scientists believe that within 10 years, machine would pass the Turing test and achieve true intelligence. Do you remember the movie, um, Space Odyssey? I think in, in 2000? Open the pot bay door, hell. Open the pot bay door, hell. Hell, do you read me? Affirmative, Dave, I read you. Open the pot bay door, hell. I'm sorry, Dave, I can't do that. Cool, sure, scary, definitely. Now, the Turing test was uh, developed way earlier than the first chatbot. It was uh, developed in the 1950s by Alan Turing to test machine's intelligence by measuring its ability to exhibit intelligent behavior such that we are, as human, we are not able to identify or differentiate between a human and a machine. So if you remember the key, is believability. Now, I also remember in the 80s, 
we used to have this pay phone. I think, I don't, I don't know whether it still exists because it seems irrelevant now. So these pay phones, we have this number 101 where we can dial for operator assistance. Do you remember? And then we have 103 where we can ask any other things. It's like a general inquiry line. So as a kid, I used to call this number at different times of the day and ask, what is the time now? Just for fun. So one day, I called this number way past midnight because the payphone was just outside my house and the operator yelled at me, why aren't you home yet? So I was shocked because I know that is a human, but if that is a bot operating at the end of the line, then the bot would save me the comment and just go straight away to business. Just tell me what the time is. Okay? Now, even better, if we know the chatbots, even better with their conversation ability if they come with a face, a realistic face, not some shiny forehead that we should, that we can see our reflection back on. So humanoid, then comes the humanoid. A humanoid, as in other oids, which means resembling something or looking like something has different key takeaway from a chatbot, which is their look. The line in the skin, the glitters in the eyes, the frown, the brow. If you remember Sophia or Hubo from the Hanson Robotics. Um, there's another example, the Jiminoids from Hiroshi Guy Lab at Osaka University. They are so lifelike, they are so believable. So what are their higher purpose? For companionship. We are okay if the bot falls short in answering our question as long as they don't sound stiff and robotics because at the end, we want to believe that we are actually conversing with another human. And bots in the future, it's going to stay. If you can imagine, um, in the future, chatbots will not only be embodied in humanoid form, but also in our smart homes. You imagine having vacuum cleaner running around the house asking for your permission. Is it time to dust yet? Is it time to dust yet? Or a weighing scale. You have an extra 15.5% of body fat. What did you eat yesterday? And by then, they can be trained for sarcasm as well. So is it difficult to build the chatbot? The answer is no, but I, just like the rest of us here, are just waiting for Google or uh, Microsoft, Cortana or IBM to build something cheap, something scalable, something readily available. But what we can do as a Malaysian, we can start building speech corpus for every single dialect that we have in Malaysia. Quite simply, in the future, by the time the technology comes here, we already have every single dialect that can be used to tailor all our applications, future applications, chat applications, to be truly Malaysian. So, my fellow chatterbots and Madame Humanoids, with that, I bid you adieu. Thank you. Thank you.